Um, so now I'm just going to show you. Uh, you can't see it. Oh, oh, the thing's not on. Is it? Um, I'm going to start this. Um, so it says uh, this is problem number 87 on the board, and Kyler asked, um, "How do you determine what dimensions the result matrix are, or the results are?" Okay. Well, it tells you to multiply b times a, right? B times a, in this case, hello? And since b, b is a one by two matrix, right? Right, one by two, because <laughs> one row by two columns. And a is a two by three matrix. So a, you can multiply these, because these two numbers have to be the same, right? Okay, so you, if these two numbers are the same, the columns in the first one times the rows in the second one. So that's why they tell you to multiply B times A, not A times B, because A times B won't work because you'd be trying to multiply three columns by one row, right? So if I multiply this, my resultant is going to be a one by three matrix, the two outside dimensions, okay? And so my resultant is going to look like you're going to have something there, something there, something there, okay? So we're going to do that on a calculator, just to show you how to use your calculator. And so, uh, not that that would be hard to do uh, without a calculator, but with a calculator, um, the way uh, that you do it is you go over here, if you didn't figure this out on your own, you go second matrix over here, and you go over to edits. Okay? And you want to edit A, and you're going to hit Enter. And you want A to be, A is a 2 by 3 matrix. So I'm going to hit 2, and I'm going to arrow over, and I'm going to change that to a 3. Okay? Then I just keep, I could just hit Enter again, and it'll take me right into the matrix. And then I put in my numbers, okay? I'm going to go 1, 2, 5, and all you have to do is hit Enter. And I'll move over to the next uh, cell. And then 100, it'll hit enter. 75, enter. Jumps down to the next one, 100. Uh, 175. And uh, 125. Okay? So now that is in matrix A. Yes? You good? Oh, did I pause, unpause you? Oh, I'm going. Okay, we're alive. All right. And then I'm going to go uh, second quit. I'm going to go second matrix again. And now I'm going to go to over again. You don't go down to B first. You go over to edit. And then you go down to B. And in B, that is a 1 by 2. And it looks like I already set that one up in the last class. So you want to make that a 1 and that a 2. And then put in those numbers uh, 3.5 and 6. Right? And now I'm going to multiply. B times A. So once you get those in there, you go, all you have to do is go second matrix B. You just go down to it and you click enter. Okay? Times. And then you go second matrix A. Okay? Boom, boom. So I multiply matrix B times A. I hit enter. And then I get my answers. I do haven't figured out. Oh, there they are. There's all, so what, these are your three, um, three elements, 1,037, and then it looks like 1,400, right, and 1,012, and they ask you what that represents, right? Well, 350 is how much each, what is 350? How much apples cost, I think, profit per uh, unit, and so the first one, so the first cell, this, uh, and the second one, this is profit from apples, and this is profit from uh, something else, uh, peaches, okay? So if I take this and turn it, this times this, and this times this, that gives me the profit from apples and peaches for each individual, uh, what is it? Uh, for each individual grocer that I go to. <laughs> so this is how much profit I made from the first grocer, right? This is how much profit I made from the second grocer, 1,400, and that's how much profit I made from third. Okay? 
Does that answer any questions you may have about that multiplying matrices and stuff? Yes, ma'am. Can I do 25? Hold on. Let's do 53. So in 53, number 53, for those of you in the viewing audience, uh, I'm not going to write down the whole thing, but basically I'm going to take uh, those second two matrices, 4, 0, negative 2, 3, right? So where I have 4, I add negative 2 to it, right? And 0, I add 3 to that. And then I take 0 and add negative 3. And then I take uh, negative 1 and add 5, so that gives me 4. And over here, I have uh, negative 1 and 0 makes negative 1. And 2 and negative 3. Uh, 2 and negative 3 makes uh, negative 1 as well, right? And then I am going to multiply that by, I'm not going to do the whole thing, by this matrix, which looks like 0, 2, negative 2, negative 2, right? Negative 2, not negative 3. And uh, 4, 1, 2. So my first, so first of all, this is a 2 by 3 times a 3 by 2, right? So my answer is going to be a, looks like uh, my answer is going to be a three, 2 by 3 by, so my answer is going to be 2 rows by 2 columns. Yeah? And so if I take this and turn it, 0 times 2 is 0. 2 times negative 3 makes negative 6. And negative 2 times negative 1 makes... Uh, makes 2, so negative 6 and 2 makes negative 4, and that goes up here, got it? And then I take it, turn it, and multiply by that one, and put that answer here. Then I take this one and turn it, and multiply it by the first one, and put that answer here, and then I take it, turn it, and that goes there. Your answer should be negative 4, 10, 3, and 14. Does that answer your question? Yes, okay. We're going to learn now. Do we need to? Uh, no. Yeah, I, I don't know. Do you need to? Maybe not, but if you want to do okay on the test. This is actually uh, 7, 7, and this is called this, de not discriminant, you said something different, determinants. Determinants. Okay? And determinants are a way to, uh, determinants are ants that are very ambitious and want to build really tall ant hills. They're determinants. Okay, never mind. We'll move on. Then. All right, so uh, determinants, oh my goodness, this person can't call me right now. I don't know who that is. South Dakota. I told them to go away. There's someone trying to sell me a, a trying to sell me land in Idaho or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's always something like that. Okay. So, uh, oh, I have to look at my notes for this. So, uh, determinants are not really uh, ants that are very determined. Um, determinants are used for solving matrices, so they give you a method for uh, using uh, for solving matrices. You use determinants with something called, uh, I think it's called Kramer's rule, where you can uh, solve matrices using determinants. You can use determinants to find cross products, which we'll use later on, and they're used to solve higher power um, equations. Nowadays. Your calculator can do determinants for you, okay? But determinant gives you a uh, it gives you a, um, a a number back or a scalar quantity. So if I have a um, the way you do it, so if I have a matrix like A and it has some cells in it, so here's A one. We'll call this uh, B two. B1, we'll call this A2, and we'll call this B2. Then the determinant of A, which is equal to, when you do a determinant, you draw straight bars on it, like absolute value, okay? 
And it's like you put A1 here, same numbers go in there. In this case, we're putting letters in there. And all you do is you multiply the diagonals and you subtract them, okay? So in this case, the value of this determinant would be A1 times B2 minus A2 times B1, okay? That's all. You, so you multiply it this way, and then you subtract this way on the diagonal. So, uh, so let's say, for example, that B is equal to uh, 2, 1, 4, 2, and the determinant of B, which is equal to this, 2, 1, 4, 2, is just equal to 2 times 2 minus 4 times 1, which is equal to, in this case, what's that equal to? 0, Zero okay? So in that case, that the value of that determinant is just zero. Isn't that easy? All right, we're done. No, we're not. Only because uh, we got to talk about three by threes because they get more complicated. Let's you try one. You try, okay? You try this bad boy, okay? It's really hard. Two, negative three, one, two. Find the determinant. Find determinant of this. Okay? Who's going to tell me the answer? Go, go, go. <coughs> go ahead. Evan, Rice. What? I thought you said the answer already. What about the answer? What was it? <laughs> Seven. Yes, that's correct. Okay? Two times two. Okay? Minus, right? One times negative three. And so 4 minus minus 3 makes uh, 7. Easy enough? Okay. Can you do that? Should we take the whole chapter test on this? We should do the whole chapter test, okay? So we'll just do this 10 problems the same thing over and over again? Okay. Uh, that wouldn't be higher level thinking skills, okay? Um, Problem with determinants, determinants is that they get bigger. Okay. Oh, the other thing, they always have to be square. Okay. So you can only perform a determinant on a square matrix. Okay. So if it's a three by two or a six by five, you can't do it. So they have to be square. And uh, and let's do a three by three. So in the case of a three by three, it works a little bit differently. Okay. Three negative one uh, two. 4, 0, and 1, like this, okay? That's not a 12, I gotta move that, move that 2 over, okay? So uh, this one looks like this. The way you do it with a square, I'm just gonna show you, uh, well, one thing that you should know is that the signs of a determinant alternate, okay? So, uh, whoops, if this is the, I wanna find the, the determinant, not the, value to make. This is matrix determinant is without any, okay, without any bars there. So if I want to find this, like this, okay, um, the other thing that you need to know is that the signs of a determinant alternate, okay? So it goes plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. Kind of like a checkerboard, right? right? It, everything next, right, adjacent to this will be the opposite sign. I'll explain more of that with a formula in a second. So if I want to find the value of this one, okay, it's zero times this uh, minus two times something else plus one times another determinant. These determinants are a two by two. So the way it works, I'm gonna try to do this with my, uh, my um, high divider. You either go straight across a row or straight down a column, and it doesn't matter which one you go. You either go straight across a row or straight down a column, and you will have three values in front. So let me just do this, and then I'll kind of talk about some things, okay? so. If I cross out this, if I'm going straight across the top row, 
I cross out that top row and that uh, first column. And what's left over from that top row and that first column is what goes in this determinant right here. One, two, zero, one, okay? Then I move over to the next thing, okay? The next one, I'm gonna, uh, so the next one you cross out, uh, you cross out this column and the top row is still crossed out and what's left over is three, two, four, one. Everyone sees that? Three, yeah. two, four, one. You cross out the first row and the second column. I'm working across this row. This number goes in front of this thing, which is called a minor, okay? This, each one of these things <laughs> right here, this part of it is called a minor, okay? This part of it is called a minor, okay? This part of it is called a minor. And the way you find those minors is by going straight across a row or straight down a column and crossing out that row and that column. So now I'm gonna come over to the, the one, whoops. I'm gonna come over to the one. I'm gonna cross out the one row and the one column. What's left over, Cassie? What's left over when I cross out this, this? That's what's left over right there, see that? If I cross out this row and this column, what's left over is this. You're not seeing it? No. Well, we'll practice some more. Okay, so th you'll get some practice. Three, negative one, four, zero. Yeah? Maybe? Most of you? Okay, this thing is called a minor. The whole thing with the number multiplied in front of it, that thing is called a cofactor, including the sign of the cofactor. So this part from here to here, that's called a cofactor. And uh, these are all called cofactors from here to here, okay? And uh, this would be minor and cofactor. I'm gonna call this one, one. I'm gonna call this one, two. And I'm gonna call this one, three. And what that means is I crossed out the first row and the first column. Then I crossed out the first row and the second column. Then I crossed out the first row and the third column and that's what's left over. Yes? And then I calculate the value of each one of these determinants. So it's gonna be zero times, well, I don't care because zero times anything is what? Zero. Zero, okay? Minus two times whatever is in there. So that's, what goes in there? Three minus eight. Three minus eight. Right, I multiply the diagonals, three, minus eight plus one times, what goes in here? Negative four. Negative, negative four, because it's three times zero minus negative four, right? So it's minus, minus four, which becomes plus four. So altogether, the value of this determinant, this is zero times, zero times, what goes in there? Um, negative one, minus zero, right? Negative one minus zero, but it doesn't matter because I'm multiplying by zero anyway. So I, when I simplify this, this goes away. This becomes negative two times negative five, which is, this is 10, and this is one times four, which is four, four and you get 14, okay? Yes, Evan, yes. Uh -huh. Can that be any of the rows or columns? Yes. So for, yes, sir. Oh, this is your first question. Go ahead. What was your question, Garrett? Minor 1, 3, wouldn't that be 7? Because it's 3 times 0 minus 4 times negative 1. Right. 3 times 0 is 0. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, just to show you, uh, Evan, what I think what Evan said, you can cross out any, any row and uh, any, you could go any way, okay? So say for example, I just said, I'm gonna go straight down this column, okay? Straight down this column. 
So if I went straight down this column, this is going to be negative because it goes plus, minus, plus. So can you see that? You can't quite see that. So if I went straight down, okay, first I'd cross out this row, this row and this column, right? So that would be negative 2 times, uh, well, times the value of this, I should have put determinant there. That'd be negative 2 times the determinant. When I cross out this row and this column, what's left over is 3, 2, 4, 1. Yes? Okay? Then this is, this is positive, right? But there's a negative in front of it, so that's still minus 1. Okay? Minus 1, hold on, Cassie. Minus 1, I'm going to cross out this row and this column, and I get 0, 1, 4, 1 there. Right? And then I go uh, plus 0 times. I'm going to cross out this, this row, and this column, and that leaves me with 0, 1, 3, 2. And if I do this, I get negative 2 times 3 minus 8 is negative 5. This gives me minus 1 times 0 minus 4, negative 4. And this gives me plus 0. So again, I get 10 minus minus 4 plus 4, which gives me 14. See? So either way, I get the same answer. Um, no, because it because going down this oh yeah you're right you're right that'd be minus minus zero times yeah okay but it's into yeah it's into zero it doesn't matter what was your question yeah where are you getting negative two negative zero and zero negative two two negative one zero right and the pattern is see how it goes plus minus plus so if those numbers are 3, 4, and 5, would you use 3, 4, and 5? If those numbers are 3, 4, and 5, I would use 3, 4, and 5. That is correct. Okay? Uh, in the formula, what they say is the way to find the sign of this number that goes in front. They give you a formula. It's negative 1 raised to the i, i plus j power times m i j i j and this is the minor okay i let me number my this this is the minor right here okay this number this represents the minor like this thing over here and this represents the sign of the number whoops the sign of the number that goes in front of the minor. Okay. Whoops. It's uh, so it's um, the so in this case, if I so say in this case, right? If I wanted to look at this right here, this is the second row, third column, right? This so I is two, J is three, so two plus three is five. If I take two plus, if I take negative one and raise it to the fifth power, what sign do I get? Negative one goes in front. Okay, except you have to stick that two in front of there. So the minor is two times negative one times two times whatever goes in inside that little that little matrix. There. Okay, we'll do some more. We're gonna do a four by four. Yes. Use this? Yeah. yeah, that's fine. And you won't get any bigger than a 5x5, five five, okay? We're going to do a 4x4 four four now. Done? Ready to do a 4x4? Four four? Yeah, you are. Okay? One, I don't like red. Makes me uh, nervous. Makes me see blood. Okay? So uh, we're going to do this. Find this. One, negative three. 2, 0, negative 1, negative 1, 2, 3, 1, 0, 2, 0, 0, and 5, 2, 0, negative 1. 5, 2, 0, negative 1. Now, I can expand by any row or any column. Okay? So 
which row do you think I want, which row or column do you think I want to expand by? What do you think, Evan? What? That's correct. What? Right, because it has three zeros. So I'm going to be multiplying by zero three times, and that's going to make most things go away, you see? Okay? So if I expand by this row right here, okay? And uh, so just to uh, what uh, Jack said, it's going to go plus, minus, plus, minus, right? Just like a checkerboard, like this. Plus, minus, plus, minus, minus, plus, minus, plus. Get that? Okay? So that 4 by 4, yes, sir? It, it only does follow the signs that they multiply by on the like, minors. Or do the things in the minors also follow the signs? The things in the minors also follow the signs. Yeah, so you, once you get this thing expanded into n numbers times three minors, which we're going to do, then within the, each one of those minors, then that alternates plus, minus, plus. I'll show you. So you okay. can just start by filling it out with the correct sign, right? Um, just disregard the sign in the beginning and just assign it to whatever it is. Like this, negative 1? Yeah. Because negative 1 is going to become positive 1, right? Because it's negative whatever is in front of this. Yeah, okay? So this one, we're going to expand by this, by this row, okay? So the first one's going to be 0 times a 3 by 3, right? I'm not going to worry about what's in that 3 by 3 because there's a 0 there, yeah? Okay? Then it's, so this one was plus, then it's going to go minus 2 times a 3 by 3, okay? So I'm going to cross out this row and this column, and what's left over is... Is it 1, 2, 0? Let me make sure I'm doing that right. Yeah. 1, 2, 0, negative 1, 3, 1, 5, 0, negative 1. Everyone see where I got that from? I crossed out. I went this way, right? I crossed out this, uh, this and this, and what's left over goes in this box. Okay? The next two is going to be uh, plus, right, plus 0 times a 3 by 3, minus 0 times another 3 by 3, so I don't even have to worry about those. Yes? Right? So now I'm going to expand this one. So I have negative 2 times, okay? I'm just going to go straight across the top row. Okay, so it's going to be negative 2. I'm going to take big parentheses. 1, because that's positive. So I think maybe this answers your question, Harrison. So on this one, it goes positive 1, 2, 0, right? Or positive 1, negative 2, and then 0. So within this one, it goes plus, minus, plus, right? Then minus, plus, minus. So this one's going to look like if I cross out this row and this column, I get uh, 1 times. Uh, the matrix or the, the determinant 3, 1, 0, negative 1. 3, 1, 0, negative 1. Then what? Who can tell me what's next? Negative 2, negative two times? Negative 1, 1, 5, negative 1. And then I'm going to cross out this and this. And I'm going to get plus 0 times uh, this. Negative, uh, negative 1, 3, 5, 0, right? Everyone with me? Kind of? It's kind of a process, okay? So out here, I have a negative 2, so it's going to be negative 2 times, big bracket still, 1, which I don't, times negative 3 minus 0, so that's just negative 3, minus 2 times. What? Two times what? Negative four. Negative four? Yep, negative four. You guys see where Jack got negative four from? Negative one times negative one minus 
So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 minus 5, right? Plus 0 times, well, it doesn't matter because 0 times anything just goes away. So now I have negative 2 times negative 3 plus 8. Yes? Which is equal to negative 2 times positive 5, which is equal to negative 10. All right? Yes? Okay. So what I did is I, so this reduces to this, this reduces to that, that reduces to that. You can check this on your calculator. You want to see it? So what? If the, if the first matrix doesn't have a row with a lot of zero, it's like a very long process. Yeah, then it's a long process. Yeah. So you can change it into a matrix that has more zeros by using row echelon elimination. Yeah, you could. I don't think they had to do that. Okay. But um, to just to show you, okay, if I want to put this into my calculator, okay, I'm going to go to second matrix. I'm going to change my first one into a four by four. Okay, so I'm going to change matrix A into a four by four. Okay. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to put in all those numbers. 1, negative 3, 2, 0. 1, negative, where's the negative? Negative? Is that a negative 3? Ah, it didn't like that. They want the negative sign. Yeah. 1, negative 3, uh, 2, 0. 2, enter, 0, enter, negative 1. Tell me if I mess up. 2, enter, 3, enter, 1, enter. Okay. Third row, 0, 2, 0, 0. 0, enter, 2, enter, 0, enter, 0, enter. Last row is 5, 2, 0, 5, 2, 0, negative 1. Okay. Once you have that in there, you could go second quit, and then you go to second matrix. You go over to math determinant. See where I am? Math determinant. And I'm going to do the determinant of second matrix A. And if I close parentheses, I hit enter, I get my answer, negative 10. Isn't that cool? What good is this? Useful to solve multi-dimensional equations, okay? And uh, so uh, that's what you use it for. That's the end. And remember, you heard it here on roller derby. <laughs>